that's meant to be sending power down to there. Oh, actually. But it wouldn't be, would it? Because the penny just dropped. Because that is not in the permanent live. Who's calling me? Spam likely. So I'm not going to answer that. Welcome back to today's video. Gloomy day, isn't it? But I've got my little ray of sunshine here. So she's keeping us busy. Last night we went out to uh, another fellow gas engineer's 40th birthday party. Well, it's a friend of mine, but he's also a gas engineer. So I'm feeling slightly worse for wear. Um, not, didn't drink too much, but enough to make me feel a little bit today. Um, but yeah, say hi, Arian. What have you got? Gun. I got him laser tag from Audi yesterday. So he's uh, happy with that. She's happy playing with Christmas baubles. Oh no. Oh, 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 he got me, he got me. Oh. Yeah, hopefully this should keep us entertained over Christmas. But what will also help you guys out with a perfect Christmas gift, either for you or a loved one or just in general, Unilight still have their Black Friday sale on at the moment. Everything that's on sale, if you use my code UNCLE, you'll get an extra 10% off your sale prices. There's been a lot of people buying all sorts of different lights. You've got the new CL1700, the clamp light, which I think is a personal favorite. It's probably one of the most versatile lights that Unilight have made. And then you've also got the HX1080 and the IL925R, which is a personal favorite of mine. So anything that you want off the Unilight website, I think it ends midnight Monday. So yeah, don't delay. If there's something that you've got your eye on, and I know some of you lot will be thinking, oh, I'm just trying to sell stuff. I'm just trying to sell stuff. But okay, fair enough. I am trying to sell stuff. But if, it, if you want something and you get some extra money off, what's the problem? So if you want something, use my code uncle, get an extra 10% off whatever's on sale already. And yeah, just save yourself some money. Simple as that. And also check out Powered Now as well. If you are looking to sort of streamline your business going into 2025, you want to get on top of your admin and paperwork and things like that. They've got some fantastic Black Friday deals on as well, starting from as little as £15 a month. And that will help you sort your invoicing, quoting, gas sets, things like that. So check it out. The link's all in the description. And yeah, knock yourself out. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys soon. Okay, got a nice little job to do here this afternoon. I have been to this boiler before and there used to be a complete kitchen here, but there isn't anymore. And I'm here today, they, while they're doing the refurb, they want me to just reroute this gas pipe, as you can see, it's sticking out quite a bit because I think before there were units here, so this pipe was actually running inside the units, but now that everything's been ripped out, they just want it pinned back to the wall. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna cut that here I thought in the picture they sent me initially, I thought that was barrel, but that's not, it's just a plastic sleeve. So I'm just going to cut that, get an elbow onto there, come across there, around there, and limp back onto there. So it shouldn't be too bad of a job to do that. I need to do a full service on the boiler as well, a landlord gas safety, and they think there might be a problem with the three port here as well. Luckily, it's a sealed system. I've just checked the spindle. Spindle's moving absolutely fine. So I don't think I need to change the body. It might just be the synchro motor, but I'll check all that when. I'll run the boiler, but for the time being, I'm just gonna get cracking with this gas pipe. Yeah, I'm literally just gonna from there, ping it across, round, and straight back onto there. So let's get that done. Tightness test is already done, um, so yeah, I can just crack on.
gas has been rerouted and I thought I would try my bending skills out today. I was so close, so close, but no cigar. Oh well, we're living then, like I said, I'm not a big install person. Give me a breakdown, not a problem. Give me pipe work, it'll take me a lot longer. I was trying to do it in two pieces. So my whole plan was to get that there and then just have this bit here. But this was the original offset that I'd used here and I'd pulled that too far out. So it was actually pulling, coming away from the fitting. So where I'd put my mark on it, it was actually coming away from that. And then it, when I tried to do the 90, I'd done it a little bit too short, even though I thought I'd measured it accurately. Clearly, I hadn't done it accurate enough. So I then ended up just doing another little offset there on a small piece, cut that there, reused the 90 bend that I had there. And the offset, the original offset I pulled there, actually worked out perfect for here. So then the length of it, I just cut that, put an elbow on there. There we go. So we've got total one, two, three, four fittings. I was trying to minimize it. I was hoping I could get away with just one two three fittings so it's one extra fitting but it's not the end of the world not a big deal and we'll go down and do a drop test now as long as that's all good i can start doing the boiler service i'm not going to film the boiler service because it's a worcester cd not cd it's a worcester heat only green star so there really isn't much involved in the service on this other than the kebab and all that so i'm going to change the electrodes the bearing plate and the gas tube and then i'll have a look and see what's up with the three port try and get that sorted as well so yeah, as long as the drop test is all good, let's call this one a day on this one. And I I think I've got a couple of other jobs booked in. If it's anything interesting, I'll film it. If not, here we go. Back in Enfield, another HIU that's leaking. Another PM valve to replace. This time, I'm not going to first person view it. I'm going to put this on a time lapse somewhere here. I just want to see how quickly I can do this now. So I think this is the sixth one I've done this year. So let's... Hopefully not jinx it. Let's try and just see how quickly I can do them now. I forgot to say, time is 3.02. Let's see what time I finish it. Done. Everything's back on. All good there. 320. 18 minutes. Start to finish. Love it. Okay, first job I'm doing today is going to be fitting a nest onto this system. The customer's got heat on your boiler, it's on an S plan. Now we had this big board door that screwed onto there. So as I've removed that, I found all the external components inside there, except the pump. Can't find the pump, but it doesn't matter because I don't need to know where the pump is because I'm going to be fitting a nest and I don't need to know where the pump is for the nest. There is a shower pump there, but yeah, we don't need to worry about that. They've had some issues with regards to hot water. And I think I know why, because that's the hot water zone valve. I'm just traced it from there and there's no hot water demand on but that is hot and the spindle is just loose heating zone valve stone cold so my suspicions are the synchro motor has failed on that so i'm going to whip that off i'm going to check that the spindle is nice and free on there if not we'll free up the spindle on there and then we can get this sorted as well i've got synchro motor WD-40 and stuff like that here so that if we do need to service the brass body the spindle then I can do that and also wiring center is here and we're going to be fitting a nest off of this there is a twin channel programmer downstairs by the boiler so I will need to decommission that and I also need to double check how that's been wired to the boiler because I don't want to just rip out the cables from here and then we get lost because we don't want that what's um 
I've had that before and we need to make sure that because the boiler that's fitted here is a backseat heat only so that only needs a switch live neutral and earth it doesn't need a permanent live so as long as the switch live neutral and earth are wired into the boiler then I can disconnect the programmer cables from here and I can make that programmer downstairs redundant and I just got to fit the nest here now they don't have a thermostat currently not that they know of they've only moved in here a couple of months ago and they said they haven't found it so they're just putting the heating on and off from the programmer so with the nest they've got the nest stand as well so we can power that up via the stand so in the meantime first thing i'm going to do i'm going to check what's going with this zone valve then i can start sorting out wiring up the nest we'll go from there so i've just loosened the screws off now that motor is i can't actually keep my hand on it and there's no hot water demand on pipes are all cold so i'm gonna uh, don't think that's is that loose enough enough should have done come on all right yeah look i've taken that off of there and that's still like that let's check what's this thing yeah that's stiff as well so that brass body has basically fried the motor so i'm going to sort that out and i'm going to change the synchro motor on this and then fit the nest to here so let's get on with that now the way i do these there's a little circlip just there so what you want to do you want to pop that circlip out and then you want to spray some wd-40 um, and some machine oil tap this spindle into the body wiggle it around and then pull it back out. Make sure you don't let it go all the way in because if you lose it, you're done for. you got to then change the whole thing. We don't want to do that here. So I'm going to lube this up, get it moving nice and freely, and then change the synchro motor on that, and then we should all be good. I've got the wiring center open, and I've found some interesting things. Firstly, okay, so this top one here, that's our hot water zone valve cable. Now here, this is actually motored open and you probably can't see it because of the light but that's hitting this the micro switch but the boiler is not fired now if you look here so this is a hot water cable whoever's fit this zone valve head because this looks like a, a new zone valve head they put the brown into the permanent lives and they put the gray in with the common on the cylinder stat which is wrong because so then that blue is then wired to this red so i don't know what that's meant unless this is the programmer cable so this is for the old programmer um which is fine so that's going to be made redundant anyway yeah that's going to be the that's got to be the programmer cable so that's going to be that yellow cable there isn't not going to be a thermostat that yellow cable is going to be our heating on demand the red cable is our hot water on demand, which is wired into the blue. So I need to open this up to make sure this has been wired correctly as well. And then, yeah, I need to sort out. So what's this? I've got a red here. So that's a switch live. That's the switch live going back to the boiler, that red cable. Because that's wired in to the two oranges there now the strange thing here is so this is my permanent live which is fine now obviously we've got permanent live on this brown which is why that's permanently motored over but the weird thing here is I've got nothing on the switch live so I don't even think it's a case of just changing the synchro motor I think I'd need to change the whole valve I mean the whole motor I said because if that's meant to be sending power down to there oh actually but it wouldn't be would it because the pen is just dropped because that is not in the permanent live who's calling me spam likely so I'm not going to answer that obviously it's not going to send power down to the boiler because the gray needs to be in here in order for that to get powered for that to send power back down the orange okay 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 
So because the grey hasn't been wired into the permanent live, although the micro switch is made, right now it's acting as low voltage. So it's sending low voltage signal back down to the boiler, which is why it's not fired. As soon as I flip that round and I put the permanent live on there, that will then energize the orange, which will then send a switch live to the boiler and get it to fire up. Bingo. So yeah, I don't need to change the head. Probably don't even, don't even need to change the synchro motor on that because I reckon as soon as I disconnect this, that will spring back. So let's give that a go. Okay, don't do this. I'm doing this, but don't do this because this is a risk. Everything is still live here. I've just taken the gray out. And if I touch it to the permanent live in here, right, I can hear water circulating in the pipes. So I know that's now sending 240 down to the boiler and telling it to fire up, which is perfect. So we know that's working. Now I'm going to turn the power off, disconnect what I need to disconnect, rewire what I need to rewire, and then we can get the nest fitted. Right, here is the boiler and the programmer. So I'm going to take the programmer faceplate off. I just need to double check that the wiring here, that's just wired straight into the boiler. So we're going to have switch live neutral nurse, and then I should just be able to disconnect that completely, make it redundant. And we should hopefully be okay. So I'm going to open this up, make sure that the switch live cables aren't in there and being used like a junction box. And if that is the case, then I can get rid of the cabling up there, fit the nest how I need to fit it upstairs, and we should be sweet. <sighs> right, bingo. So I've just turned the spare off, and look, synchro motor has sprung back. So we don't need to worry about replacing that. And I have identified the cables from here. So yeah, this is our programmer cable. And there is no thermostat here. That yellow is literally coming straight from the programmer for heating on, and the red there, that's our hot water on demand. So I'm just going to open up the cylinder stat, make sure that's been wired correctly. And then I can rip out the programmer cable here. Obviously leave this cable. So this is our switch live cable going back to the boiler. So we'll leave that in position, get rid of this, and then I can just wire up the nest as I need to. Okay, everything's wired up. So we've got obviously neutral live, link between live and two, and then two and five. Number three is the black cable that's going straight to the brown on the heating zone valve. And then we've got number six, which is the gray cable that's going into the common for the cylinder stat. And that then comes back up the blue, which then will activate the brown on the hot water zone valve, send power down to the boiler, take the common for hot water. So I'm just going to tidy it up, close it all up, and then we'll test it and make sure everything's working.